right, guys, picking back up from, from where we left off. Number 11, maintain communication. Remaining linked to every member of your group is one of the most vital factors in a successful mission. Without proper communication, hunters can become separated, overrun, or accidentally shot by their own people. As in conventional warfare, this happens more than it is generally acknowledged. Small two-way radios, even the inexpensive brands marketed in electronic stores, are the best way to remain in contact. Walkie-talkies are also preferable to cell phones in that their signals do not depend on satellites, relays, or any other external aids. <clears throat> Number 12. Kill and Listen After a skirmish, always be wary of a secondary zombie group. The moment a ghoul is put down, cease all activity and listen to the world around you. Chances are that if any zombies are within earshot, they have, been, they have overheard the battle and are moving in on your position. Number 13. Dispose of all bodies. Once the area is truly secure, burn both the bodies of the undead and those in your party who have fallen. First, this erases the chance of infected human corpses reanimating as zombies. Second, it prevents the health risk associated with any type of rotting flesh. Freshly slain humans prov provide an attractive meal for birds, scavenging animals, and of course, other zombies. Number 14, Incendiary Control. When using fire, make sure you keep in mind the larger implications. Can you control the blaze? If not, will the fire endanger your group? Is the zombie threat serious enough to warrant destroying giant amounts of personal property? The answer may seem obvious, but why burn down half a town to kill three zombies that can easily be destroyed by rifle fire? As stated previously, fire can be powerful, as powerful as an enemy as it is an ally. Use it only when necessary. Make sure your team can easily escape a wild blaze. Make sure you know where all explosive and poisonous chemicals are stored, and if their destruction could endanger your team. Make sure you practice with your incendiary tools blowtorch, Molotov, flare, anything else, before entering a combat zone so you know what they are capable of. Be aware of flammable fumes such as leaking gas. That's it. <laughs> Even without resorting to, f to fire as a weapon, the danger of these fumes, spill chemicals, leaking fuel tanks on automobiles, and a host of other hazards are enough to prohibit smoking during any search and destroy mission. Number 15, and the last rule, never go off alone. Self-explanatory, right? There are many times when it seems wasteful to send an entire team to do one person's job. Wouldn't five individuals cover more ground than a group all bunched together? In terms of time and efficiency, yes. For safety, the priority of any zombie sweep, staying together is mandatory. A separated individual could easily be surrounded and consumed, even worse. Hundreds have come up against Walking Dead who, all, who only hours before were members of their own party. That goes over the basic rules. Um, that is the section on the attack of the Zombie Survival Guide. And what I'm going to do for you guys, uh, seeing as my reading is not the best thing, is I'm going to actually put down on the bottom, down there, uh, the actual words as I read them in this video so you're going to see them. Um, which you probably already know that because I'm just I'm telling myself now, but you've already said you know, whatever. The next thing we're gonna go over after I'm gonna make a whole new set of videos for this is weapons and gear. So people have been asking quite a bit about weapons and gear. So we're gonna go over what weapons to use what weapons are good, what weapons are bad. If I don't cover something, make sure you message me about it. And I will see you guys next time.